First day of Ramadan and tensions are high in Jerusalem. The United States is building a floating port on the shores of Gaza. Meanwhile, Hamas leaders are escalating the situation at the expense of the civilian population of the Gaza Strip. I'm Yair Pinto, and this is your Boots on the Ground report about what is happening in Israel on the 156th day of the war against Hamas. And first of all, I want to say Ramadan Karim to my Muslim friends and neighbors. Ramadan in Islam is the month of religious reproachment, internal reflection, in which Muslims obtain from food, drink, and smoking from sunrise until sunset in the evening. It is a holiday that is essentially associated with mercy and forgiveness, but in Muslim history, it is a month of wars, and that means it is also a month when Israel's security system is under added pressure. This year, Ramadan is taking place in the shadow of the Hamas-Israel war. This is happening in the background of attempts by Hamas leader in Gaza, Yechia Sinwar, to set the area on fire and incite the Israeli Arabs to carry out acts of violence and rioting. Israel is on high alert amidst fears that the situation could ignite, leading to violent disturbances and civil unrest. The epicenter of everything is the old city of Jerusalem, and especially the Temple Mount. So Israeli security forces have been deployed there in large numbers and remain on high alert. Actually, I can't remember the last time Ramadan holidays didn't put the entire Israeli security system on high alert and readiness. This year, the whole world is on standby. Israel's policy has been and always will be to maintain freedom of worship for all religions. This is how Israel will of course behave this year at Ramadan as well. It is important to remember that Hamas strives to set fire to the area during Ramadan at the expense of everyone else, including the Palestinian residents of the Gaza Strip. So please continue with us to spread the truth, share our videos on YouTube, follow us on social media, and help us create more content by supporting us financially. And most importantly, continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Your prayers are the secret weapon that can thwart Hamas's plans to ignite an explosion in this region. Meanwhile, IDF spokesman Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari was interviewed by Sky News Arabia this week, saying that Hamas leaders are escalating the situation in Gaza. There are four Hamas brigades in Rafah that we want to destroy and dismantle. We will implement the ground attack plan on Rafah at the appropriate time and create the appropriate conditions. The military operation in Rafah is important. A solution must be found with the international community to make the distribution of aid safe in the northern Gaza Strip. Keeping all of this in mind, I believe it is possible to understand why US President Joe Biden recently announced the establishment of a temporary floating port in Gaza for the transfer of food, water, and medical supplies. The Maritime Corridor through Cyprus will allow the Americans to supplement aid that reaches Gaza from the Rafah crossing and from Israel, making sure it bypasses Hamas, which shamelessly steals from the aid shipments that are already being sent into the Strip and little of it makes its way to the northern part of the Gaza Strip. The Americans choose to build a floating port because the port that exists today in Gaza City is shallow suitable for small fishing boats, but not for cargo ships. Therefore, in order to bring in sufficient large volumes of supplies and equipment, the Americans must build a port in Gaza. The port itself is a special complex pier, like a giant Lego. It will be made of iron floats, 12 meters long each, which connect to each other up to a length of 550 meters. The floating pieces allow quick assembly of parts for the ferry 
and also an access road towards the beach. These structures were perfected by the US Marines in World War II when they had to land troops and vehicles on small islands in the Pacific which didn't have a deep water port. Another thing that will have to be delivered to this port is fuel and this will be done by using refueling ships anchored far offshore sending the fuel through tubes to storage tanks close to the coast. Look, a port has many advantages over the current method of airdropping supplies, but the biggest advantage is the massively increased volumes of supplies that can be delivered and the speed at which it can be done. However, there's also a very dangerous downside. In order for a port to work, it will require US soldiers to be present on the ground in Gaza, something that will be politically very difficult for the United States administration. I don't see how this can be avoided. The IDF is supposed to provide a perimeter security to the port so Hamas cannot approach the area where the supplies are being unloaded. But there will still need to be someone on the ground unloading the cargo and making sure it gets put on the trucks to be sent to wherever it's supposed to go. If the Americans don't do that part themselves, I'm not sure who will. This will all have to be sorted out very soon because yesterday it was reported that a logistical ship was sent from the United States Navy on its way to the Eastern Mediterranean. This ship is designed to carry out the construction of the temporary floating dock planned for the coast of Gaza. It is important to emphasize that building such a port is a complex process that can't be rushed, with the Pentagon saying it will take them about 60 days to complete the port. As I said before, the question of who will take responsibility for receiving and properly distributing the aid inside the strip after it's been unloaded will have to be answered soon. It is clear to all parties that Hamas cannot be responsible for the distribution of the aid. But the United Nations and non-governmental organizations also lack the capacity to be sufficient players in the distribution of food, especially since Israel is refusing to cooperate with UNRWA and many other countries are continuing to withhold support and funding for this organization. Even if UNRWA was somehow rehabilitated, it has never been an armed group and thus it does not have the ability to physically prevent Hamas or other armed groups from stealing the aid as we have seen recently in the Gaza Strip. Once again, I will take this opportunity to ask you to continue helping us spread the truth about the situation by sharing our videos on YouTube and other social media platforms. If you'd like to send us direct support, there is a link next to the video where you can do so. Switching focus now to the southern Gaza Strip, where fighting continues, I will begin this part of the report by closing a circle that began last Friday when Major in Reserves Amishai Ben David of the Egoz unit was killed in action. The terrorists who killed him were tracked and located within 24 hours and a combined ground and air operation was launched against their position. It resulted in the elimination of this terrorist squad who won't be killing any more IDF soldiers or Israeli civilians. Meanwhile, the soldiers of the commando formation continue to engage Hamas terrorists in the Hamed neighborhood of Khan Yunis. These intense engagements often include close quarter and even hand-to-hand -hand combat. The Israeli Air Force is always ready to lend support to the ground forces, providing real-time intelligence and sometimes direct fire support. In the last 24 hours, terrorist positions inside apartment buildings were raided, uncovering the usual mountains of weapons, explosives and ammunition. IDF field reports indicate that 18 terrorists were eliminated in the course of these raids as they refused to surrender 
and preferred to go down fighting. Some Hamas terrorists did decide to save themselves by surrendering. And this included two field commanders who were interrogated by the IDF intelligence. The information they gave will probably be used to plan today's raids against Hamas. In another location, the combat team of the 7th Brigade and the Givati Brigade combat team, along with the Air Force and the Armored Brigade, engaged Hamas terrorists in fierce battles leading to the elimination of several terrorists. As has become quite routine by now, they also discovered and destroyed large amounts of weapons and ammunition that Hamas has intended to use against Israelis. The IDF now is starting to fight in a western neighborhood called Hamed. Until October 7th, Hamed in the Khan Yunis area consisted of more than 50 buildings with a height of five stories each, including about 3,000 housing units. Qatar provided most of the money for the housing complex, starting about seven years ago. But despite being the main sponsor of the project, Qatar did nothing to prevent Hamas from using it as a base. And when the IDF began operations to root out these terrorists from the area, it resulted in the destruction of many of these buildings. Most of the Hamas leadership was not harmed by any of this, as they live in comfortable luxury hotels in Qatar, Turkey, and elsewhere. From the safety and comfort of these luxury hotels, they make decisions that bring death and destruction to Israelis and Palestinians alike. Without these terrorist leaders, the children of Gaza would now be in their schools, their mothers would be feeding the family, there would be work and recreation for everyone, and Gaza would be full of life. I want to conclude by saluting an Israeli hero who fell defending the country yesterday, Major Michael Gal, 29 years of age, from Jerusalem. He was fighting for the company of the 450th Battalion, Bislamach Brigade, and he fell in the battle in the southern part of the Gaza Strip. Once again, we need to understand that these people have normal lives. Most of them left their day-to-day -day jobs in order to defend the country of Israel, to defend their children, their parents and their loved ones. This war is fought on multiple levels. We are winning the physical war, but we are losing the war for the public's opinion. And we need your help in sharing the truth because this is a spiritual battle. And spiritual battle is fought by sharing the truth and by praying. So please join us in prayer for the peace of Jerusalem. Hello, this is Mati here in Jerusalem with TBN Israel. This is Yair Pinto from TBN Israel here in Jerusalem. TBN Israel is keeping viewers informed with Israel-focused news, culture, and what God is doing in this land. Support TBN Israel today online at tbn.org Israel. Thank you.